hello guys welcome once again to my youtube channel have you heard about the new changes in the temporary graduate visa today i've got this amazing immigration lawyer who's here to explain to us about the new changes in the 485 temporary graduate visa so let's listen what she has to say Hello everybody, my name is Tracy and I'm an immigration lawyer based in Australia. As you may know, there has recently been a lot of changes to the migration policy and legislation in Australia. And there have been a couple of visas that are hotly talked about at the moment. And there is one in particular and I've received about 200 emails or so in regards to seeking clarification. Um, about the change. It has been about the temporary graduate visa in the post-study work stream and what these changes are all about. To make it easier for you to understand, let's put into perspective uh, for my two clients called Tom and Lucy who are both applicants for the 485 visa. So for example, we have Tom and Lucy who are in a relationship Tom currently holds a 485 visa as the primary applicant and Lucy holds it as the secondary applicant. However, later on after Tom's visa expires and Lucy completes her requirements to be eligible for a 485 visa, she can become the main applicant for a 485 visa and Tom would be the secondary applicant. So on the 20th of January, new legislation did come out and I must say the internet was a little bit in meltdown about this. I didn't get too involved in it because I had to reread this a few times to understand myself. But there was actually a lot of debate regarding interpretation of this and whether you could still do that. The changes were made because as a lot of you may know, 485 visa holders, if you studied and lived in regional Australia for the first two years while you held the 485 visa, and if you continue to live and work there, you could be eligible for a further one year or two year extension of that 485 visa. So instead of having two years previously, you can now have three or four years. Let's go through together the little section which has got everybody questioning and uh, I must say I was a little bit confused myself but when I had to read into policy and also the explanatory statement to fully understand and grasp what was going on but I'm pretty sure I have it now please remember guys before you make any visa application or make any decisions on your visa please consult a migration agent or a lawyer here in Australia to make sure that you don't have any issues so to be eligible for this visa, you can't have previously held a 476 visa and you cannot have previously held a 485 visa in the graduate work stream. So it says here, unless you are an applicant and have nominated to apply for the visa extension, which is all good, you have not previously held a subclass 485 visa and you have not previously held two 485 uh, temporary graduate visas in the post-study work stream. So that was what was confusing for a lot of people. What they thought that meant was that if you previously held a 485 visa as a secondary applicant, you could no longer apply again as a primary applicant. So what that means if you graduated, you study a bachelor or master's degree in Australia for at least two years, you meet all the other requirements, you could be eligible to apply for a 485 visa. However, if that visa expires and then you go and study again, another bachelor or a master's, you can't apply for a 485 visa again. 
based on meeting the criteria of the first one. Does that make sense? So I can't go and do this twice. I can't study, apply, then try and study again and meet the primary criteria again and apply again. That is what that clause is referring to. It does not actually mention about being a secondary applicant. To meet the criteria of a secondary applicant, you didn't have to study or do all of that, meet all the requirements for your 485 visa. You just had to be the partner of someone that had the 485 visa. That section has nothing to do with being a secondary applicant because to be a secondary applicant on the 485 visa, you just need to be the partner or the dependent of someone who meets the criteria for the 485 visa. So let's go back to our example of Tom and Lucy. So Tom studied a bachelor's of mechanical engineering in Australia for four years in a CRICOS registered institution and he meets all the requirements for a 485. He applies for the 485 and Lucy is purely a dependent on that 485. They are both granted the visa for two years and they do their thing. In the meantime, Lucy is studying and she also then meets the requirements for a 485 visa. So then she applies as a primary applicant and Tom will then become her secondary applicant. So in that instance, Tom meets the criteria because he once held it as a primary applicant and now he's applying for it as again, but not as a primary applicant, just as a secondary applicant. And what the criteria that he needed to meet was to be Lucy's partner. So then both of these guys have held the visa twice and then the third clause strictly does not allow you to apply for it a third time. So you can't be uh, Lucy studied in regional and then she meets the requirements, then she applies for the third one and then Tom's also the secondary. Nah, -uh, that doesn't work because that is having a 485 visa three times. So the maximum you can hold a 485 visa is two times. It doesn't matter if it is because of this primary and secondary way or whether if you had studied in regional Australia and you meet those requirements for the further visa extension, you can't hold a 485 visa three times. Okay, so I hope that clarifies things for everybody. Um, it really did take me a while to understand it, but I think that's going to be really helpful to a lot of people. Thank you very much. I believe that information has been really powerful and it's been really informative. Please remember to subscribe, remember to share and also remember to hit the notification bell so that any time I post a new video, you're able to get more of this information. Thank you very much and bye-bye.